I have discovered how the quantitative easing, the inflation, makes the unemployment go down and cures the recessions. The Ben Bernanke is a genius. The Ben Bernanke is a jackass, so permit me to doubt. The problem is the sticky wages. An economic genius, the Maynard Keynes, solved the sticky wages problem with the inflation. Since the inflation does not increase the purchasing power, permit me to doubt. But what is your scheme? In the recessions, there is a chain of events. First the demand goes down, so the sales go down, so the profits go down, so the wages must go down to maintain the profits. But the sticky wages will not go down. So the businesses must lay off some of the workers. But if there is, for instance, 5% inflation, prices go up 5%, but the wages do not go up, so the real wages go down 5%, overcoming the sticky wages and the money saved can be used to employ 5% more people. I do not see how your scheme can succeed. You are working on the wrong end of the chain of events with the consequences instead of the causes. What do you mean? I will get to that. But first, suppose the wages were not sticky and the employers just cut salaries by 5% and use the money saved to employ 5% more people. Total purchasing power of the salaries is the same. It is just spread out over 5% more people. And the average purchasing power per person decreases by 4.8%. So what? So you said the chain of events started with a decreased demand. But what caused the decreased demand? What do you mean? From 2001 to 2004, the jackass Fed set the interest rates really low to stimulate the economy. The unsuspecting suckers went on a big borrowing binge. The borrowed bucks temporarily increased the power to purchase products. But it also created the debt of doom, which then decreased the power to purchase products because the money must go to pay the debt. So the sales went down, and the profits went down, and the sticky wages led to the layoffs. What are you getting at? The real problem is the decreased purchasing power caused by the debt of doom at the beginning of the chain, not the sticky wages at the end. Your scheme does not change total purchasing power, which is already decreased by the debt of doom. Your scheme decreases the average purchasing power per person even more by 4.8%. If purchasing power does not increase, then sales and profits will not increase. Why should employers then hire more people? Your scheme fails. And trying to do the same thing with inflation fails for the same reason. And with the inflation, the purchasing power of the employers also goes down. There is no gain in purchasing power. But with 5% inflation, the debt of doom goes down 5% because I may repay my 100 cent dollar of debt with the 95 cent dollar. Then your gain is offset by the losses of the savers and the businesses that sell on credit, and the people with salaries. The losses equal the gains. There is no net gain. But I do not mind ripping my neighbor off to decrease my debt. Do you mind ripping yourself off? What do you mean? Your work is devalued 5% too. Before the inflation, you must work one hour to get a 100 cent dollar to pay your 100 cent dollar of debt. After the inflation, you must work one hour to get a 95 cent dollar to pay your 100 cent dollar of debt. You must work the same amount of hours to pay your debt. Then I will demand a raise in salary. Then your scheme to use inflation to cure unemployment fails another way. It depends on your salary not going up. Also the 95 cent inflation dollars must be borrowed and must be paid back with 95 cent dollars. Then I will demand more inflation so that I may pay the 95 cent dollars of debt with 90 cent dollars. Then you are back where you started and the inflation cycle continues with no net gain. Oh poop. Business people do not read the books of the Maynard Keynes to determine hiring. They look at sales and profits. And the human beings do not like to have their purchasing power go down, especially when there is inflation. Perhaps these are the reasons why the inflation did not decrease the unemployment in the 1970s when the inflation and the unemployment both went up.
but the inflation increases the prices, and if the prices go up, then the profits must be going up. Not hardly. The prices go up, because the inflation increases the cost to produce, ship, and sell the products, not because more purchasing power drives them up. Increased purchasing power may drive up prices, but increased prices do not drive up purchasing power. The Herbert Hoover and the Franklin Roosevelt were confused about this, and their confusion was part of what caused the Great Depression when they tried to keep the prices high. But if inflation is not the solution, then what is the solution? The jackass Fed must be prevented from trying to sucker the human beings into the debt of doom. But once the debt of doom is there, it must be paid. There is no easy solution from some jackass economist. But this would mean that the policy of the Fed to constantly try to stimulate the economy with 1 to 2 percent inflation is bullcrap. And the idea of the Ben Bernanke to decrease the unemployment with the quantitative easing is also bullcrap. So is the real problem the sticky wages? Or the decreased purchasing power caused by the debt of doom? Can the employment be increased when purchasing power is unchanged or decreased even more? Are the lessons of history on inflation and prices wrong? Are the Maynard Keynes and the Ben Bernanke the geniuses? Or the jackasses? Let the cartoon bears now ponder this. I have to say jackasses. Me too.